got another brand new pre-built for you with the all new super powerful 4090 GPU. I have reviewed an insane amount of pre-built PCs recently and this one should be the most powerful of them all so far. In this honest and unbiased unboxing and first impressions video, I'm excited to be taking you through my personal experience with the Corsair Vengeance A7 300. This model that I have here for you includes the AMD Ryzen 9 7900X CPU, an NVIDIA GeForce RTX 4090 GPU, and 64 gigabytes of 5600 megahertz of DDR5 RAM. Aside from the unboxing, I'm also gonna be showing you the included software, taking a look at the internals, as well as sharing with you a sneak peek of some gameplay. Not that many pre-built PCs have 4090 GPUs yet. Alienware, of course, does, but this PC is priced way better than the Aurora R15. I just check that one out too and it is pretty fast but we're about to see how this much less expensive option compares you're gonna have a pretty good idea how powerful this pc is after you watch that gameplay as you watch this video remember to comment below with your more specific questions that you have about this pc so that i can be sure to address them in my full review coming next and if you're publicly subscribed not only do i guarantee a personal response but your comment gets replied to first We've got some unpacking instructions, your reminder to remove the protective foam before turning on your computer. That's pretty important. Some info on connecting your display and Wi-Fi antennas, and then instructions on how to turn it on. Super helpful information. Go ahead and remove this protective foam. Then we've got your super beefy power cable. Very necessary for a computer that's pushing this kind of power. And then also in that bag, we've got your Wi-Fi antennas. And then last but not least, your Corsair Vengeance user manual, as well as your typical warranty guide. Just as beautiful as the i7-300. So taking a look at the internals, you can see that we've got six fans total for this chassis. Up here at the top left is our Corsair IQ H100i Elite Liquid CPU Cooler. Next to that are two sticks of 32 gigabyte for a total of 64 gigabytes of 5600 megahertz Dominator Platinum RGB DDR5 RAM. I'm betting these are gonna look beautiful when it's all lit up. And right here in the middle, the most expensive part of this PC, the most powerful GPU in the world, the NVIDIA GeForce RTX 4090 GPU with 24 four gigabytes of video RAM. Wow, this is definitely the heaviest GPU that I've ever held in my hands. This thing is massive. This is my first time holding a Founders Edition 4090 GPU, and I must say, it feels pretty nice. Well, look at that, a power cable rated for 600 watts. Look how much beefier this is than the Alienware Aurora R15 version of the 4090. That one just looks puny next to this one. And just above the GPU is our super fast Gen 5 Samsung SSD, and this is the heat sink for that super fast SSD. And then it looks like we've got three additional slots for more SSD storage. And then at the bottom, we've got our Corsair R M1000X power supply. For the ports on the top, we've got a power button, a USB 3.2 Gen 1 Type A port, a USB 3.2 Gen 2 Type C port, a headphone and microphone combo jack, and your reset button. For the ports on the back, we've got a flash BIOS button, a useless HDMI and display port, two USB C and two USB A 3.2 Gen 2 ports, four USB A 3.2 Gen and one ports, your ethernet jack, connectors for your antennas, your high quality spit if output, rear speaker, center speaker, microphone, line out, and line in. And on the back of your super powerful 4090 graphics card, an HDMI port, and three display ports. Now checking out the included software, we've got this Corsair Diagnostics app right here. Here you've got a bunch of different tests that'll help you scan for any issues throughout your computer. This blue screen troubleshooter tab sounds pretty cool. Where has that been all my life? Then under my device, we've got a nice broad overview of how your CPU, GPU, and storage are currently behaving. And then we've got this CPU-Z app that gives you much more in-depth info on all of that. All right, now for the IQ software. This controls all the lighting effects, and honestly, the only easy-to-use part was on the Home tab, and I really did not like any of these included lighting effects. I mean, watercolor was okay, but the others were just way too crazy. To actually customize this even further, you had to dive deeper into each of these components individually to enable more options that actually look quite a bit better. I definitely 
definitely think a slow rolling rainbow wave looks really nice across this entire chassis. And lastly, in the MSI center, the only thing that you'll probably use here is the user scenario section. Here you can select your profile for extreme performance or balanced and silent for quieter fans at reduced performance. Now price wise, this PC with maxed out specs like the one that we have will run you about $4,000. This is about $50 more than the latest Intel version, which is labeled the i7-400. Now the least expensive pre-built that I've found with the latest CPU and GPU comes from iBuyPower for $3,500. My experience with iBuyPower though is that they usually don't perform as well as the competition, even with the same specs. Skytech usually performs pretty well from my experience though. Their new Mark 40 series with these same latest gen specs cost a little over $4,500. 40 series GPUs and 13th gen CPUs are also available in pre-builds from Origin PC. Their similar spec Genesis cost a little more than that Skytech at around $4,800. And CLX with the latest AMD CPU, $4,900. And the most overpriced latest gen gaming pre-build award goes to the Alienware Aurora R15. That's going to run you $5,100 for those same specs. So as you can see, Corsair fares pretty well against the competition here. So I'm about to jump into some gameplay, but keep in mind this gameplay was done before any updates. I do this because sometimes updates actually break things and make things worse. It's pretty important to at least do a few tests right out of the box. Now in my full review, I'm going to be giving you a much more in-depth look at overall performance and gameplay frame rates, as well as everything else that you'll possibly want to know before purchasing this very expensive computer. But if you plan to purchase this computer before then, then please remember to use my affiliate links in the comments and description below, as I get a small commission at no cost to you for every single purchase made. And it's actually a major factor in keeping this channel going and getting better and better for you. Or if you just want to support this channel to help keep it growing, then please consider becoming a channel member by clicking on the join button below. And remember, every week I do a giveaway that randomly selects someone who's interacted with this channel in some way or filled out the form in the description. So make sure to like, comment, and subscribe with notifications turned on to stay up to date with that, as well as staying up to date with all of my latest gaming PCs. And make sure to ask any questions that you might have in the comments below so that I can make sure to address those in my full review. And if you're publicly subscribed, not only do I guarantee a personal response, but your comment gets replied to first. All right, let's go ahead and jump into some gameplay. This is Witcher 3 at ultra settings at 1080p. Let's jump forward a few minutes to get a good average and 350 frames per second. All right, now switching to 1440p, fast forward through a few minutes of gameplay and just barely under 300 frames per second and pretty low temps on the CPU and the GPU. Not really pushing as much power as it could on either of them though. Now let's bump it up to 4K. Jump forward a bit and almost 180 frames per second. Definitely way faster than all the other 3090 PCs that I've tested. Now let's jump into Call of Duty Black Ops. Don't worry, I'm gonna get to Modern Warfare 2 in the full review. Definitely wanted to test it on Black Ops 4 first since I've literally tested that game on every PC that I've ever reviewed and I'm really curious to see how it's stacked up against all of them. Here you can see all of my pretty much maxed out graphics settings at 1080p. Let's fast forward a few minutes and a little over 380 frames per second. All right, let's skip 1440p on this one and jump straight to 4k. Fast forward through some gameplay and 260 frames per second. That's excellent. 80% faster than the fastest 3090 pre-built that I've tested. And the winner for this week's amazon.com e-gift card giveaway is... Thanks for watching, guys. I love you guys. God bless.